Dr. Duncan Stein has a new role, well, sort of, at the University of Louisville. Former U of L basketball All American superstar and NBA baller Daryl Griffith has been hired as a university ambassador, and he's with us this morning. Daryl, we're excited to have you, but let's explain a little bit by what I mean. A new role, because we've seen it touted elsewhere as a new role, but it is, sort of. Yes. Uh... My past uh, experience at the University of Louisville, I was the uh, uh, community director of, of, of advancement. And uh, this role, I'm titled an ambassador. And I'm working out of the president's office, directly with President Neely. Uh, but I also will be working throughout the whole entire university, uh, whether it be uh, cultivating donors, uh, working with the uh, racism agenda, uh, working with Valerie and her efforts at the uh, Cultural Center. Uh, working with the uh, with the admittance uh trying to get uh, students in the west end to uh, attend the university of louisville uh it's just a lot of more roles that i have to do but i'm eager to do it and it's fun to, uh, that i'm back at the university of louisville dr neely bendapudi one of our favorite people to have on great day live she's fantastic um she said in a tweet that your role is to support the university's strate strategic plan yes. and cardinal anti-racism agenda can you mm -hmm. give daryl i mean can you give any kind of glimpse into what that really means i mean we've all seen if you've been paying attention to the news we've seen butch beard um, mm -hmm. university of louisville basketball star who asked that his name be removed and you know he it was an open letter to the university and you are as an ambassador i mean you build a bridge with people so how how are you going about that well uh and and uh to answer your question in reverse in butch's case some of the uh, concerns that he had angie we were already ahead of the game on that you know when i came uh, uh on the university i one of the things i they asked me what could we do different i said we need to uh, address the situation with the former players and the athletic department and what that looks like and uh, how that's perceived to the former players. We, we, can't, we can't forget them. Uh, then the article with Butch came out. You know, I was hired in November and we started working on that already. It was some of the, one of the concerns I had with, uh, about the, uh, uh, the makeup and how we're doing things here at the university. Uh, Vince is doing an excellent job uh, going in that direction. Uh, the university is doing an excellent job in, in uh, making a more inclusive uh, campus uh, amongst all the uh, students and the faculty and the players. Uh, it's just being more aware, listening to what's going on, not, you know, a lot of times you'll have an agenda and you put the agenda out and it's just a facade. It's not nothing that's really taking place. You throw a little sprinkle here and a little sprinkle there. Uh, but uh, President Neely, she's very committed to making sure that this university is very uh, inclusive, that the racism is is not an a issue here. So that's why you got to listen. You know, uh, you know, sometimes you speak of racism and you just hear it, hear, hear, hear a comment, hear a comment there. It's got to be an inclusive uh, audience to where you listen to both sides about the issue of racism. That uh, That's the only way we'll be able to uh, go forth uh, on a positive uh, note. Uh, within the nation and especially at the University of Louisville. Uh, so that agenda that she has is, is, is falls in line with, with, you know, my thought process. You know, this country is so divided, you know, this division in the city. And we want to make sure at the university that, that we don't have that division, that we have discussions about it so we can tackle it and be a, a more inclusive university and a more welcoming university. Uh, uh, to come to uh, when we have them issues uh, resolved or we're dealing with them. Oh, absolutely. I, I, and I appreciate you saying, you know, it's one thing to talk about racism, but it's another thing to listen to people mm -hmm. and you clarifying. I mean, and it's been in a, a variety of media outlets that you're in a new role after all of this, but you've been, you've been locked in for years at the university, but then in November, you have already been working on all this. Daryl, I want to ask you, I mean, it's Black History Month. Why is this important to you? Well, the, the key word is history. Mm -hmm. uh, you you got to look back at the shoulders and the people that got us to this point. Uh, they have to be recognized uh, as African-Americans in, in this country. We've come a long way, Angie, but we still have a long way to go. 
uh, obviously of, of this last four years and things that have right, arisen in the tension and the resurfacing of some of the wounds and, and things that have happened back in the 60s, you look at back and you say, we're still dealing with these same issues. Uh, we have to make a more concerted effort on uh, uh, trying to tackle these issues. And they ain't going to be easy because people got their different opinions. They're stuck in their ways. Uh, we just got to be more uh, mindful and, and, and try to be a, a country and a city uh, that uh, can listen again, I'm using that term, and, and try to come to some common ground and, and live as one. And then we're all Americans. You know, everybody's my brother. I don't care if you're white, Chinese, black. You know, we're Americans. And that's why I was just brought up. Uh, so uh, we can, if we can go forth on that path, I think you know we'll make some some leeway. I always say that I mean, I, especially now, just celebrating history and in, in all fronts. But you know, Women's History Month is coming up. I mean, I get excited about celebrating Black History Month, but I also hope one day we won't have it anymore because we celebrate history all year long and all of the history that have made us Americans. I agree, you know, uh, particularly with Black History Month, I think it's just a more of a, uh, uh, a month to recognize the past, the shoulders mm -hmm. that we stand on, uh, to get the young people to realize <clears throat> uh, how important of, of a place that we have in history, uh, some of the people that they might come in contact with that are current uh, that are being recognized that you might not really realize the path that they laid for you to get your education, for you to be where you are, your job, uh, for you to be recognized in your job, have opportunities to get a better job and a better place in your job, uh, whether it's they'll look at your color, they look at your abilities. Uh, that started somewhere. Uh, and, and, and it's a good month for, for people, especially young people, to, to reflect and, and, and say, okay, this is Black History Month. Let me look back and see why it's so important. Absolutely. Okay, final question for you. And I would love to know, as an additional answer, how many times people ask you this, when's the last time you played basketball? Oh, it's been a while, Angie. Uh, you know, my, my days of basketball are over. And my, my legs have officially retired. <laughs> uh, I might shoot around with my, my sons or if I go to the gym and see some kids. Uh, I don't go to the gym to play, but, you know, I'm just shooting a jump shot. Very little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, Daryl, thanks so much for taking the time on Great Day Live. Uh, no problem, Andy. Good talking to you.